everybody. Welcome to a, uh, a small review of episode 2 of American Gods. When we last left off, um, Shadow got taken by Technology Boy, shoved inside of a digital limo, surrounded by two goons, and got told, don't fuck with me, by Technology Boy, and told me. Told him, hey, can you drop me off at the Motel America? And he proceeds to get punched. Technology Boy goes through some rigmarole of how the old gods are trash and that are going to be taken, the new gods are going to be taken over, and uh, he might as well delete Shadow. And after deletion, there's no going back. Then after that, he gets dropped out the limo and proceeds to be beaten to death and or lynched. Which was definitely not in the book, which was interesting. I see they're going for a little bit more visual type things, more political things that are nowadays with the whole... Actually, race war has been going on forever, so it's not really new. Um, and then at the, also at the beginning, you have Mr. Nancy's uh, talk with the slaves on the ship, which I'm going to be putting in at the end of this. It's about three minutes, but it is damned good. Uh, hopefully I don't get copyrighted for that, but, you know, fuck it. I'm going to put it in there. If they bitch and complain and demonetize my thing, hey, at least you guys get to see, hear it. For those people that don't have stars. And then, after that, Shadow goes to the hospital, gets patched up, heads back to the Motel America. And he gets like five or six staples in his side because he got his ass beat. And proceeds to talk to Mr. Wednesday, who has, who has the best charm in the world to get the front desk lady in into his bed and has his way with it, which is pretty good considering what Mr. Wednesday looks like compared to in the book where he's a slick motherfucker. And this he's seems a little bit more down and out on his luck, but he's got charisma, as he says. Um, the one thing that is weird is Shadow seems not to shooken up about the almost um he seems shooken up but not as much as you think he would be of almost getting lynched he seems pissed off but he's not he's after he talks with mr wednesday and mr wednesday's like i may not look this but attack on you is pretty much an attack on me they're gonna get what's coming to them. and shadow just goes to his room after that chills in the tub like he does in the book except for he did get the shit beat out of him in the book. The one disappointment I have with this episode is the slight, maybe like 20 second glimpse of Laura Moon that we get. We don't get the back and forth that they had in the book about, you know, her coming back, her giving, him giving her the coin, and where she pretty much says she still loves him and they're gonna have to work on the relationship even though you know she's you know dead the fucking representation of the undead that is um i'm gonna be saying um a lot because this is just a straight recording i'm not gonna edit this shit um she does she does she just in the the show is just uh, shown as just a, a dream that, you know, hey, I heard some shit happen to you. Yeah, this is, it's all in your head. And then after that, it just goes to him packing up Laura's place and going on his way with Mr. Wednesday, where Mr. Wednesday's like, you gonna miss this place? Shadow's like, nah. Nah, this is Laura's place. Too many lower memories here. I'm gonna move on. And in the book, 
Mr. Wednesday's like, I hope she stays here because of the interaction that Mr. Wednesday, I mean, the shadow had with Mora in the hotel room that should have happened. And after that, they, they proceed to go to, you know, proceed to go to Chicago where they're going to meet up with the, uh, the three sisters and the butcher. Yeah. But before that, they meet up, they meet up, they go to a, you know, cafe. This one's like, hey, I'm going to deal with some stuff. You go pick up, some, here's a grand, go pick up some stuff. And if you're going to rub me off, at least only take 5%, don't take all of it. So I was like, I ain't going to steal from you. And this one's just like, if you, you're not able to like take anything from me, how you, if you can't take care of yourself, how am I going to expect you to take care of me in the, in the long run? So, Shadow goes on his way, goes to the store, gets interrupted shopping by none other than Lucille Ball. Yes, I love Lucy Lee. She's in this nice little like TV aisle doing her thing. The TV starts talking to him. He unplugs the HDMI cable and she continues to talk, saying, hey, I will give you anything you want if you join my side. Shadow's a loyal person, so he pretty much tells that person to go, go fuck themselves in the easiest way he can. Goes about, grabs some binoculars, grabs some books, grabs some cheese, goes on his way. Meets up with Wednesday. He thinks he's going crazy because of all this, this stuff is happening. But, uh, you know, stranger things have happened. Like, uh, like in the movie, I mean the show, Stranger Things. They, they have happened. But personally, I like his uh, Motel America shirt with the representation of the buffalo on it. And it's in Indiana and it's where, where it's placed. That's a cool looking shirt. I kind of want it. Hopefully they come out with some merch for this show. You get, they get to meet the... Uh, the three sisters, which are cool. You got the younger one, the middle-aged one, and, and the very old one, representing representing the morning, evening, and nighttime. You don't get to see the third sister, the nighttime one. And, you know, the butcher doesn't want to want to go with if you read the book, you know what happens. The whole checkers game. But we don't get to see the, the second game. That's where it ends. You see one game, you see the butcher talking about his his mallet, how it's killed like 10,000, it's taken 10,000 lives. And then it, you see Shadow lose the first game and then cuts the black, nothing else. And in between all this, you have Bilquis the quote-unquote um, Lady of the Night who's consuming all these people to get, you know, her worship as the old guards aren't get worship. But as for that, that is my breakdown of the new episode. I'll see you guys next week. And I will see you guys later.
company. The moment these Dutch motherfuckers set foot here and decided they get white and you get to be black and that's the nice name they call you, let me paint a picture of what's waiting for you on the shore. You arrive in America, land of opportunity, milk and honey, and guess what? You all get to be slaves, split up, sold off, and worked to death. The lucky ones get Sunday off to sleep, but make most slaves and all for one. For cotton, indigo, for a fucking purple shirt. The only good news is the tobacco your grandkids are gonna farm for free. It's gonna give a shitload of these white motherfuckers cancer. And I ain't even started yet. A hundred years later, you're fucked. A hundred years after that, fucked. A hundred years after you get free, you still getting fucked out of job and shot at by police. You see what I'm saying? This guy gets it. I like him. He's getting angry. Angry is good. Fuck up. 